the House of Kazalam wants to give us every one of its puzzles in easy mode version, well, let's hit them all in one video. Alright, we open up with the hardest puzzle from hard mode. Now, in hard mode, I consider this almost insanely impossible, virtually impossible without a computer. Let's see if we have a fighting chance this time. And it looks like we might have a fighting chance. We have a starting position that could allow us to possibly solve things that we know have to be true and maybe work our way through. Um, is there anything else that's different? Alright, I'm just going to put one of these blocks in and see what happens. Oh, it does do something that's different at the bottom of the screen. Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry. You can't see it. <laughs> Give me a second. There we go. At the bottom of the screen, it tells you what the number is when you divide it by seven. I don't think this is too useful because the blue marker that locks in place will tell you whether it is or isn't divisible by seven. But if you didn't already know the goal of the puzzle, the fact that it's telling you to divide by seven will probably at least clue you in on that. But I think the more important advantage is the starting position that's given to us. Okay. It's this one. But don't be afraid in easy mode. This becomes actually possible to solve without a computer. The easy mode version is what the hard mode probably should have been. Feeling hard without feeling impossible. But anyway, this puzzle gives us six starting values. From these, we can determine what four of the values must be. These little numbers indicate the order I thought of them in. They don't indicate exponentializationals. Exponents. Seven is here because only seven and zero work, but both zeros are taken. Of numbers divisible by seven with two digits ending in three, only 63 exists. Same concept for 56. Finally, the same concept for 84. Now it's time for the actual working steps. First step is to solve both of those going down 0, 3 things with some combination of 2 and 9, because those are the only digits that work to make divisible by 7 numbers in those cases. There's four unique possibilities here. Our first choice. So far we had only determined what must be true. This is our first guess. I chose them to both be 2. So here is the plan of attack now. We're going to solve this row. Then we want to solve this column. Then we solve this column. Finally, we let the puzzle decide for us if we're done by putting the last two digits into the actual game. If they're not working, swap them. If they're still not working, we backtrack because we've exhausted our possibilities there. If we exhaust all of our possibilities for the last column we solve, we'll go back even further, the same backtracking in hard mode, but without making you possibly take the lifetime of the sun to go through. It took me an hour and some change to get through this, about five backtrackings in total after jumping into this for the first time in a while. Also, once again, we are dealing with only finding numbers with three digits. This plan of attack avoids four, five, and seven digit numbers and lets the game itself give a yay or a nay quickly. Starting here, okay. How do we get the numbers to use? Let's do things by hand. We need to list out the three digit numbers divisible by seven that start with two. So where do you start? Well, here it's easy. Start at 203 because that's a given, thankfully. We already know that that's gonna work because it's already in the puzzle. From there, we just keep adding seven and we keep doing that until we break 300. But assuming you didn't know the lowest three digit value divisible by seven to start with, and you didn't want to use a calculator because your pony ate it, start by taking a guess. Okay, let's try 201. To mentally check the divisibility by hand, take the last digit, double it, and subtract that number from the remaining two digits, and check if that result is divisible by seven. In this case, 18 is not divisible by 7. If we check it with 203, 
203, 3 doubled is 6, 6 from 20, that's 14. 14 is indeed divisible by 7. That's one technique. Now I will list out all the numbers that are 3 digits long divisible by 7 starting at 203. I'm just going to keep adding 7 and adding 7 over and over again. If you worry that your brain may accidentally during this time and screw you up in the middle, just double check with this technique um, from before for determining seven divisibility with a middle number and the last number you created just to make sure you, you got these right. You can also easily check with numbers ending in zero. Since zero doubled to zero, you can just check the divisibility of the two digits on the left side. For example here, just check the divisibility of 28, not 280. Okay, the highest we can go before breaking 300. Now the second step. What digits do we have available? I'm going to list them out. We have both ones. We used up all the twos and threes. We used up one of our fours, one of our fives, one of our sixes, and one of our sevens. I made a, I make a mistake here. There are no eights available. And we still have two nines available. Double check by making sure that the number of available digits is equal to the number of available boxes. You know, part of a lot of the work here is double checking what you've done to make sure that if you made a mistake, you kind of catch it early. Okay, check. No zeros, so anything with a zero is bad. We have no twos available, but this starts with twos. So remember, we have to check if it has a repeated two. Anything with a three won't work. Anything with two fours won't work, but nothing fits that. Same with two fives. Here, we have a number with two sixes, but we only have one six remaining, so that won't work. No eights, period. Nines are completely available. Oh, I missed a zero here. Now time to double check each uncrossed number. This gives us four potential candidates. Not too bad. I like having few possibilities. Okay, so I chose 217 from before. Next, I'm gonna try to solve this column. Now we are solving something that ends with a digit. In this case, let the puzzle work for you. Start with the lowest digits available to you in the puzzle, in this case, one and four. Add them in. You'll notice the column won't lock blue. So I chose one and five. And finally, I chose one and six, and the puzzle told me it locked and it worked. That is your lowest three-digit number ending in eight that is divisible by seven that you can start with. Now it's time to list them. To get there, you might think you have to add seven until you break 1,000, which would really suck. So don't do that. Add 70. 70 is divisible by seven, so it stands to reason adding 70 also gets a seven divisible number. Since the ones place is a zero, it won't change the ending eight that we want to keep. So if you try adding seven constantly and check how the numbers ending in eight uh, um, are different from one another, how far away apart they are, you'll find by trial as well that it turns out to be 70. That makes things so much easier. Adding 70 isn't too bad. It's like ignoring the ones place, the last digit, and adding seven to the value made by the two leftmost digits. Okay, I can't go further, or we're gonna break 1,000. Same tactic as before, we have available a single one, four, five, and six, and still two of the nines. So anything with a two is gone, anything with a three. Remember, these all end in eights, so we are only looking for repeated eights. Here, there are two eights, and here is another set of two eights. Those get crossed out. Let's go through and double check. Oops, I missed something. We can't double up four since we only have one available. This gives us three possibilities. When I first did this, I chose 168. I don't want to waste people's time. That's why I'm talking so slow. I already know 168 won't work. We will exhaust all possibilities for the next column without getting a solution. I know this because my first foray into this puzzle is this is what I chose and I ended up backtracking here. 
I don't wish to backtrack that far for a tutorial, so I will use the number that worked out when I did this, and it turned out to be 658. Still, I did not spend much time between choosing the 168, realizing it wouldn't work, and backtracking, which is a far cry from the hard mode version. Okay, last one. This involves the same thing we did with 217, and thankfully in this case it's easy to find a starting point since it starts with 7. It's just 700. Basically 100 times 7. I'm not going to cross out at this point. I'm just going to put a little pencil in X, because at this stage in the puzzle we can go through the choices very rapidly with the help from the game. Whatever we choose here, we simply place the remaining two digits in the middle, swap if it doesn't work, and if that doesn't work, what we just picked here is going to be discarded, and then we backtrack to the previous column that we solved. Our first potential working number is 714. If we try that and put it into the puzzle, the last two digits are put in, and then we swap, we find that neither combination works. So, 714 can't be here. Let's keep going. We have a 4 and a 9 available. If we do 749 and let the puzzle do the work for us, placing 9 in the middle and 1 at the bottom, the puzzle will not solve. But once we swap them, we will find that the puzzle does indeed solve. So if I was to condense this down, we started by filling in what we knew were the only options available. Then we made selections to two columns with very few choices. We then went a bit more in depth to find possibilities and solve the first row, then the columns, we moved to solve the next column, and then we added these two in. Originally when I chose 168 what happened was I burned all the possibilities for the second column, went to the first column and kept going. Unlike hard mode, we have a much smaller set of possibilities and a clear series of steps that don't need a computer, essentially since only four guessing steps are made in this plan. In each part, each step, from choosing either twos or nines to the available numbers, only involves around three or four choices. It's not impossible for a human to go through them. Finally, if anyone has figured out a good way to solve the hard mode reliably without a computer in a reasonable time frame, the offer is still open for anyone to tell me how the fuck you went about that. Here we go again. Like Pandita of the Seventh Mountain, this version in easy mode gives us starting conditions. Apparently, we can also move those starting conditions around, so Four. I don't know if you'd want to, though. E anyway, as I did with hard mode, I think we should do this by hand, but unlike what I did with hard mode, I'm going to be using a pencil and paper instead of a chalkboard. The values of algebra in easy mode give us answers to two symbols, and this alone substantially decreases the amount of work we're doing algorithmic-wise or algebra-wise, and eliminates guesswork completely. I've placed here the symbols as letters as I did in hard mode. I also place the equations from the game. And my reasoning for assuming addition is the same as it was in hard mode. Repeating it here, multiplication would get too big because we're limited between 1 and 10. Subtraction would give negative values, which we don't have. Division would give non-natural numbers, decimals. We also don't have decimals. Since we get E and F for free, 
Let's start by picking the equations that have them in it already. I'm going to use blue for this. 10 is equal to a plus d, and 9 is equal to b plus d. We can pretty much intuitively look here, and if you are going to take some value, add d to it and get 10. And then say take some different value, add d to it and get 9. It can easily be intuited that there is a relationship between a and b where b is 1 less than a. I mean, if you take some quantity, add to it, and you get 1 less than if you took that same quantity and added something different, then that something different is logically 1 less than what you added originally. So, b equals a minus 1. This gives us a good starting point. If we jump back to c, we have equations in the form of a and b. So, a equals b plus c. But b is equal to a minus 1. We have an equation in terms of two variables only now. But it gets better because a cancels and we get c is equal to 1. So it works out. Like in hard mode, c is on its own in the puzzle itself, which was a hint to us that it was always going to be 1. We just wanted to find out for sure. So you can skip this step if you wanted to assume C was 1. We have E, C, and F, and an easy relationship between A and B. Let's look at B equals D plus C. So B equals D plus 1, another equation in only two variables, since C was equal to 1. If we want D, in terms of a, we can easily do that as b is equal to a minus 1. So, as we did in hard mode, I'm going to rememberize these equations because they are useful for substitution. I'm going to encase them in a box, in this case green. Now for the big equation, and most important, a plus 2c equals 2d. c goes away due to 1, so it's just a plus 2 equals 2d. Now it's in a form of two variables, and we want it in a form of one variable. We have d and a, but we know an equation with d in terms of a, so let's substitute. a plus 2 equals 2 times a minus 2. Distribute the 2. Carry over what we need. I hope you guys know algebra. If you don't... So, 6 is equal to a. a is 6. But we already have a relationship for b. It's a minus 1, so b is 5. We just need d now. And d is equal to a minus 2, so d is 4. And that's, as you say, is that. This took much less time to figure out. The give me's here had led to a relationship between two variables, allowing substitution to get equations in the form of two variables that broke down eventually to an equation of a single variable, and then once that is discovered, we work back through our all of our relationship equations, substituting concrete values, and Bob's your jolly uncle, I say my word. Six. I can't actually tell if that was British. One. I wonder why this jewel required the sound to stop before it actually started spinning. We 
continue our theme of initial starting conditions being given. And this is, of course, endlessly amusing. Sorry, I, I got distracted. In easy mode, this puzzle is only half the work that we would otherwise have to do for hard mode. Hard mode required us to find the sum and then figure out how to put that sum into the grid in such a way that it worked when adding up all the rows, columns, and diagonals. This version, however, gives four numbers to us already, so once the sum is known, the puzzle solves itself. The sum is the same as it is in hard mode, 15, but assuming coming into easy mode without ever having seen this puzzle, and we just figured out that we have to find a common sum for every row, column, and diagonal, we can use the technique we did in hard mode just fine. It's the same numbers, same values, same digits. Or we can use a technique that works here because of the four numbers that are given to us. I'm going to go over the hard mode version first. Then I will go over a special version in easy mode that I find personally a bit more annoying. In hard mode, Recognize that the digits 1 through 9 could only occur once. So if we add all these numbers up, personally I like to use my favorite equation for the summation of numbers 1 to n, but if we add all these numbers up or we get the summation of them, that gives us 45. This total then comes into play when we take a look at either three columns or three rows, the diagonals won't work because they don't involve every digit, every square on the board. All three rows put together make up all the numbers. And each row is composed of three numbers. Each row must equal the same value. And if we put all those values together, they must all equal 45 because that's basically the sum of all the numbers that we have available. This means that we can divide 45 by 3 to get 15. Like I said, diagonals would not work because we would not be including every square, so the diagonals would only account for 5 of the 9 squares or 5 of the 9 numbers, which won't necessarily sum to 45. However, easy mode gives us another way. Use the numbers that are already there to build equations and guess or determine the sum based on what makes sense. Let's start with the diagonals, because in both cases, n cannot change, and it gives us a good starting point for looking at which sums are available to us. n must be either 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9. Basically, any of the odd numbers, even ones were already used. If we use those values as potential values for n, we end up with the following potential sums that we can use. 11, 13, 15, 17, and 19. This means if we plug one into this, we get our lower bound sum, and if we plug nine into it, we get our upper bound sum, and so on for all the other ones. So which number works for everyone, not just these diagonals? The Goldilocks principle says to use the one in the middle, but that's a terrible heuristic to use, and I hated that story, so let's look at the extremes. In other words, largest available starting sum and the smallest available starting sum. 8 plus 6 plus n is a sum for the top row. If we add what we have, we get 14 plus n. Since we don't have negative numbers, we cannot possibly make 11 or 13 with this. So those are not potential sums we could use for this entire puzzle. If we go to the other extreme, 4 plus 2 plus n, we get 6 plus n must be some sum. Now we choose the highest number we have, which is 9. Using that gets us 6 plus 9, 15. But we still have 17 and 19 from earlier as potential candidates. But since we can't possibly make 17 or 19 from any substitution available here, that makes 6 plus 9 equals 15 the highest we can go. In every case, 15 is the only sum that's working with 
every available combination, the extreme lowest, the extreme highest, and the ones in the middle. So, 15 is our winner. It's the only sum that works. Once we've done that, this is not too difficult to fill the rest out. In fact, it works out itself. We know what the sum needs to be for the column, so we know it has to go between 8 and 4, and that's 3. Likewise, there's only one number here that's going to make 15, and on and on and on. Now, now we get to the hard part. The hard part wasn't all the mathy stuff. The hard part is solving this in the game. and Utsava. Finally, a puzzle that does not require pen and paper. This is the same as in hard mode. Get all the symbols into their appropriate tiles, counting from one to four in different styles. Unlike hard mode, we don't have two blanks here. Normally we would and we would have to kind of circle around like this in a limited amount of space. But because we don't have those two blanks, we have the entire middle section open to us, giving us five empty tiles to play with. I can go from one end of the puzzle all the way to the other. And with all this open avenue of exploration, I'm probably still gonna find a way to fuck this up. All right. But the point is, that's why it's easy mode. You can kind of just brute force through it and screw it up, and you're going to get the right answer anyway. In fact, because of the amount of extra space that this puzzle gives us, it becomes kind of obvious towards the end that we don't have to be in a situation where we ruin something we already did and have to fix it in order to get a piece in the right position, like right here. I'm just solving the notches first, messing up the rest of the puzzle as I go along. Even in hard mode, it wouldn't have mattered how much I messed up in the beginning. The main thing easy mode is giving us now is more space to set up our movements. As we reach the end, we start to see how this really shines. This too is all the way stuck back there, but we can easily get it through without mucking up anything else. See, I'm using up two of those spaces that would otherwise have blanks from hard mode to hold these other pieces. And now I can rearrange these pieces however I like so, there's, so I can put them in a winnable state even if they already weren't. That about wraps up these sets of puzzles. Next time, we'll hit the turning of the Divasa.